Happy Friday and welcome to the Midnight Crossover Show. Uh, with every Friday, we get together with Andre from uh, up north, no cow, as we call it. Uh, I'll bring him in and Brad in a second. Um, you made it to the beginning of the weekend. Congratulations. Uh, hope everybody is doing well. Tonight's show and every show up until April 5th is brought to you by Monkey Man. Only in theaters April 5th. Uh, if you've been watching the show, we've played trailers on there. Brad got us kicked off the, the internet last night because he played a trailer with Phil Collins in it. I'm just kidding. It's not his fault. They ended up correcting the issue, so the show is up in its entirety. Uh, cannot wait for this movie. If you are local here in Las Vegas on April 3rd, I'm sending a bunch of people to go see this movie. Um, hit me up. Um, use any of our social media. Let me know if you want in, and I'll make sure you're there. Uh, Seeing it for everybody else. Uh, and on that note, let's bring in uh, Wingman number one, Wingman number two. How are you both doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good considering I got us kicked off last night. <laughs> yeah. And you see, they, my, they... my camera is like at an angle. You see it? I feel like it's it, it's crooked. Uh, I don't know. It's subtle, but I think I can kind of it's see subtle. it. It's subtle. You know what it is? Because my dog's in here. Where is she? My dog's in here because my wife and kids are out of town. And so she was, she was snooping around over there and she hit the cord and it was like, boop. I was like, oh, no. So I'll have to fix that later. I'm just going to roll yeah. with it. Perfectionist. I, it looks straight enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah whatever. <laughs> like I said, I, <laughs> mine's always crooked. Uh, like I said, I sound good now. Thank you. Thank but you got a new mic. Uh, what kind of mic is that? This is a AT20200 something. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let's see. When did you get that? Audio Tanisha. I got it yesterday. Uh, Rhea sent it to me because she said. Oh, I, sent- I was gonna say because you know what? She has a mic that looks just like that. Yeah, she says this is the one her and Max used. She was uh, making fun of me, saying I uh, I sound scratchy and all jarbled. I'm like, oh, I, I, and I and I and I listened to the show. I didn't hear anything until she said that, and I'm like, ah, okay, yeah. And then you always uh, sound sudden, a little muffled. It was like, hur, hur, hur. you know, it just sounded yeah. like. And that was she a big mic that you had before too. Yeah, it's a she brand. Also- it's a brand new, a very expensive mic. I guess it just wasn't the right. But it didn't have controls and things on it. You couldn't do sound control. Yeah, control. you know so, the ones that don't have TV controls. Show. Those ones, like it, really needs like a, a separate sound mixer to make it sound good. Um, that's what came with earphones too. So it's like, hooked oh, up. that's cool. Yeah, so the earphones are actually hooked into You're the right. actual microphone. Oh yeah, that, that, that's how the shirt mic is. And, and uh, Ray also, she also sent me my headset and my uh, mic, so she definitely gave me some uh, uh, technical upgrades too. Which speak of the devil, how's it going, Rhea? And this, right. hey, like here she is. Here we go. Yes, hit the like and subscribe. So button. she sent you guys both that. Yeah. yeah well, she sent me mine like last summer, so I've had mine for a while. This is uh, new for William. Yeah, I, mean, oh, I had to. Very good. Had very nice. Her. Just the regular old this microphone right here that I like I said it's it was super expensive. I mean it's not hooked up now, but it's like super expensive and it's you know I thought I sounded good, but then again, like I said, it's not what you know it's what my what I think of my sound is not really uh, as important as what you know it's it's, it's an audience driven show. So um, so yeah, I mean before I even uh, responded to that, I, I do sound. She had already had a microphone on the way. So. You sound much better, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and I and I was testing it last night with Brad to see how I sounded. Uh, you know, because it's like yeah. it's, it's literally it's literally a high tech, you know, but it's nice and then it, it works. And like I said, I'm not used to wearing earphones uh, when I'm on here, but the the thing can actually you can adjust it to where you can hear your voice, so you know. If yeah, you sound that's how this one is, it, or or like down. the uh, the Blue Yeti, or yeah, the, the Blue Yeti that I used before had the audio plug in, and you can hear yourself. It makes a huge difference because when you can hear yourself, I don't know what it is. I I I I, I can't. Like if I use my my uh, my AirPods and I can't hear myself, I it's just it's a weird feeling. I just don't like it. This one you can, and like yeah. I almost bought the the next one up from this, which is the uh, uh, the SM7B, but that one you need a separate sound mixer. So I was like, well, wait a minute, hold on. So I, I'm gonna pay a bunch of money to get this, and then I gotta buy a separate sound mixer, or I can get this one where I can just use USB and the headphones plug directly into it. I was like, I'm gonna get this one. Yeah, I could have used a sound mixer for the other one, but you know that's probably I, what you needed for the other one. That's why it sounded yeah. so because it, it like it was just basically on default, and there was nothing to like adjust it. So now I have two of these. I have one at the store, and I have one here that I, I'm not going to that I don't use because the Amazon Basics one I bought that we we stream from the store. Uh-huh. That one is crystal clear. That one's the best mic I have, other than the cat ears. Um, but yeah, I got my new laptop in. Uh, so. Um, just oh, in time nice. for Brad, not yeah, Brad, not to have to suffer through a scary movie. We'll be, we'll get back to uh, 
we'll get back to scary movie. Um, uh, I was just cancel it personally because it's like it's like we. I mean, oh, come on, here we go. Uh, 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 the donors, but I thought, the donors I, I thought uh, Zack Snyder was going to join you guys. Remember that? <laughs> Yeah, I know that was a joke. That would have been. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. It was funny. Yeah, that would have been absolutely awesome, hilarious yeah. if he'd have done that. If he'd have uh, done we, that, and Brad's like, I have to watch this stupid yeah, no, movie. He with- has to watch it and not be pouty about it. But so tomorrow, uh, I, I I think tomorrow, I, I think we're gonna do it at um two normal time, two o'clock. We're going to be doing hmm. um the arrival uh per one of our donors, Larry Kokoritz. We're gonna do the arrival because he wanted to do a Denu. Uh, the new movie, and then uh, later on, I think around five, Roadhouse. we're going to uh, do Roadhouse. We're going to do a group watch for it. Both of these are going to be charities. And by the way, uh, I was on Film Junkie. I literally switched the screen over from this to Film Junkie, so I haven't even gotten up yet. In, in you know, in that time. However, though, I made the announcement of what we were going to be doing as far as uh, after months and months and months of it um, being on the uh, the original goal, we have officially um, we officially extended the goal. To uh, fifteen thousand, uh, we currently uh, sit right now at ten thousand uh, two hundred. But there you go. So um, the little the little ball right there was the original ball, original goal. So now the uh, it doesn't even give you another one. So it's like right now we're we're gonna we're gonna go for uh, fifteen thousand. Yeah, nice. Just, we have just under a month to uh, to pull in forty eight hundred dollars. I love I love that that thumbnail is just so perfect for you know hitting that ten grand uh, threshold. Yeah. That we did, uh, and the fact, of course, the fact that we did it, you know, on the three year anniversary on the day of the second Rebel. Oh, yeah. Trailer. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we sure so, did. We sure did. Yeah. And, and also yeah. the day, of course, you guys tagged Meet the Spartans on me. <laughs> Meet hey, the hey, Spartans, gotta, man. That's a you got to watch that in IMAX. It got us. It got us oh, to 10 grand. Yeah. yeah it got us to 10 grand. 10 so grand. Said, uh, you can now attach something positive to that dreadful movie. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, tomorrow is the arrival. And then uh, later on, it will be. Um, It'll yeah, be yeah, uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Which I saw that uh, I pretty much because I pretty much all night with that. Um, on a, a Thursday, we you know, stream, I just pulled up because I was really looking forward to it. I pulled up my Roadhouse on Amazon Prime. I freaking loved it. I, I thought of it, and I'm a big fan of the original, and this is really cool because it, you know because it you know it takes a lot of the core elements of the original, but it really is also a very different movie. It's a very different right. trail of uh, of Dalton with uh, Jay Gyllenhaal. You know, he's uh he's coming kind of from a different place. He's got some you know different demons he's dealing with, but you know it's it's a, you know, it's a very I think it's a very worthy follow up to the original. And the fight scenes are incredible in it. So that's I, what I've yeah. heard. I, I heard the fight scenes were really good, and I was yeah, like, really? Yeah. All right, is, um, are they like the raid? Are they like the raid, Brad? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 that's way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some uh, I, 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 yes, they are definitely. I, I feel uh, the fight scenes that are. Uh, yes, I feel they rise to that level of intensity. And uh, you know, funny I'm shocked too, to hear this. Anything too, also, uh, well, yeah, because and God forbid we actually do a watch party of the raid too at some point for charity. Uh, that's that, that's not the kind of misery that gets us donations. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. But, uh, and, uh, you got to uh, go the hard road. <laughs> yeah, but, but but yeah, but it, it's easier to go the the. the but I, I'm telling you, we guys, I, I said this to Wayne last night when uh, when we do the the roadhouse watch party. You guys, somebody. I forget it was comments the last night as we were wrapping up that um, you know it's like Mad Brad versus Sad Brad or, or, or Rad Brad or something like that. And I'm yeah. going to show you guys tomorrow in our roadhouse. You're going to see Rad Brad. You see yeah, Mad Brad. And, you know, but if we, don't get, if we don't get, if we don't, it's a fun you raiser, It's a fun Love raiser. Rad Brad so much. You're going to forget all about Mad Brad. I just want to see nothing but Rad Brad. I want I there want donation. Go. I want donation, Brad. That's all I read. Don't give me well, that. you're going to you know donation Brad is going to be way more. People are going to want to see him more with Rad Brad. So, <laughs> uh, I, well, I'll, I will judge as we refresh the screen uh, on our little tilt up yeah. uh, campaign here. And if and, you know, and if, we, if we raise a significant amount of money with with Rad Brad, uh, you know what? Maybe 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 we'll do it too. But if uh, <laughs> if we don't, if we don't, I mean, we might have to like you know start digging down. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, these these parody movies out there. I mean, you know. Start yeah, catching dollars. Doesn't stuff. mean we have to have to watch most or all or any of them. <laughs> we have to go in the direction <laughs> of the donors, man. We're we're, we're That's it, fundraising. Man. That's bit, your man. audience. You, I mean, you guys, you got to cater guys to them. This garbage yet? What's up? Yeah, I, I, guys, I'm not getting sick of seeing our total, our little ball. Yeah, yeah. Little I, I mean, if the, if, if the audience isn't getting sick of it, you you just got to keep doing it. It's for yeah, it's all for a good cause, man. It's all for a good cause. When, when they stop making it rain, Brad, then we we can bring back Brad Rad. 
Brad Rad is at the end of the, the, yes, the, end of the journey. See Rad Rad tomorrow with Roadhouse. You will prefer Roadhouse. Hey, hey, Rad, and, hey Rad, Rad. Let's, hit, let's, let's hit 15 grand tomorrow. If we hit 15 grand, I, I, I will embrace bra, Rad Brad. But if, if we don't, I want Sad <laughs> Brad back. You have to do it now, guys, or you don't care about your 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 reneging on your concern for the charity. So there you go. Uh, I just guilt tripped you all into it. And the, okay, Rad, these, Rad, these people have no Rad. conscience. You see who's in our audience? These are some conscious free mofos. Uh, but anyway, hey, uh, you can also donate to me and like, like you know, donate because everything I get in from you guys goes into like equipment or directly equipment. I mean, things like this, uh, Frappuccinos, caffeine that keeps the public, the general public safe from my inner rage when I'm not caffeinated. So it, 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 it's, it's all for a good cause. Everything we do here is for a good cause. But if you want to do that, streamlabs.com forward slash sci-fi center slash tip. Uh, I will, uh, if my little chat thing is working, I will read, um, I will read your chat on the air. And, uh, if it's in the case of like a musical request, like we've been doing those with the whole Legoland things, uh, uh, Larry loves those. So we do those for him. So yeah, everything helps when you're, uh, when, like I said, you're on a shoestring budget. So, um, Nicotina, since you're the guest, what do you want to talk about? Well, you know, I think that we should start off with the, the biggest topic of it all. X Men ninety seven yeah, and and Brad I, I I I can't wait to talk about this with you I, I know William's a huge fan of the show <laughs> <laughs> I mean look did you guys even or, or William did you even watch X Men ninety seven No I told you I wasn't going to I know but still it was so good dude it was so good I I loved it hey, Brad did hey, you look, watch hold it on. Wait wait hold on guys hold on wait wait hold on I'm looking oh, at my phone I'm looking at my phone hold on wait. Oh, did we get a donation? March. No, 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 no. It's March. Um, <laughs> what do you have a tricorder? <laughs> it's March twenty four. Oh, I'm sorry. It's twenty twenty four. I get. I stopped giving a shit about nineteen ninety seven in nineteen ninety eight, especially when it came to the X Men. <laughs> Dude, this uh, uh, look. You can feel the way you want to feel about it, and that's fine. Okay, but what I'm saying is that like this show is so. It was so good. And uh, the animation worked really, really well. Um, I, I would argue that X Men '97 so far, it's only been two episodes, but I would argue that X Men '97 is, you know, aside from Loki and like maybe Moon Knight, this is probably one of the best Disney Plus shows for the MCU. Well, and it's not even the MCU. It's, it's not even six one six. It's not even really MCU, but still, it, that's how good it was. I, I really, really enjoyed it. In yeah, all fairness, it, 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 I did bring I did bring somebody on who I brought RJ on who had watched yeah. it. Uh, I fished him out of chat and watched it. it. I, 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 seen, it. I will I, see I, it though. It's just it seems top yeah, the, the, it seems pretty pretty across the board. It seems like getting like, pretty like close to universally uh, pretty uh, pretty well praised. Yeah, well, well sad sad testament of uh, the the society, but yeah, sure. Well, but the thing too is that like it stayed true to what the original show was. That and didn't stay true. That the, the original show that didn't stay true to the the source material. But go ahead. But by well, the way, I, I mean, it, it, like they did to a certain extent. But but yes, obviously they changed a lot of things in the cartoon because it was a cartoon back then. But this one, I'm telling you, this one actually does justice to the comics, in in the story and and the plot twists that it adds. Like I, when when at the end of episode two when it ended, I literally was like, holy shit. Are you kidding me? They did something that was so fucking cool that I thought they were going to do what most t what most shows do, which is kind of like, you know, some details don't make any sense, so they just kind of they just kind of write it, you know, make sense of it. They literally did something that was like I did not expect them to do, which was so cool. All right, well, it only took him 27 years to... Uh, well, but look, to, I'm to telling you, it was, it, more, it was, it, it was good. It was good. I I really enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. I thought it was a lot of fun. Okay. Like I said, that's what I just <laughs> said, and I will watch it, because uh, uh, from what he explained it to me, that we're, we're not watching um, the fluffified... Uh, yes. Here, exactly. here Johnny, yeah. let me yeah, sit you down in front of the TV, and I don't have to worry about anything harming you on the screen. Uh, no, I'll this say. one is, is much more... Uh, I don't want to say it's darker, but it's it's more serious. It's uh, it's way. I mean, it's better than the original, uh, yeah. animated series, obviously. But I, I mean, I mean, the original one game. was on Fox Kids on Saturday mornings. You know what I mean? So it, it can only go so far. Uh, well, this it, one's going to be a lot better. 
yeah, that, that was that was something RJ kind of said because because I'm going to pull up uh, both the episodes uh, over the weekend and something he said and, and again it sounds like from the, a lot of the reactions I've seen is that it's it, like you said it's not so much that it's a darker show but I've got I've gotten the sense from the response that the the makers of it were let's let's say we're very cognizant of the fact that the audience of the original is now much older and they've kind of leveled the show God. up you know aspects for that. Well, like right here, uh, Niner for Life. Uh, he's a he, he's on my uh, stream I, right now. He yeah, he has your, a great comment. One of, your, one of your Niner cronies in our chat. No, I'm just kidding. Hell yeah! <laughs> bang bang! Uh, God, he says, "I'll be here. honest. I thought it was going to be <laughs> dumb, uh, just really bad continuation. But I enjoyed the shit out of it. It made me feel like I was a teenager again back in 1992 when the original premiered. And and that's what I'm saying. Like, so the intro, the fact that they basically remade the intro with with newer and better animation, that was really cool in itself. I was like, wow, they did that. Holy fuck!" And then not only that, but like we got to see like X Men, like real fucking X Men. You know what I mean? I was just like, yes, I want more X Men in the MCU, and have waited so long to see it. We saw Fox do it, and it was always just like good, but it, it could have been better. You, for the most part, it for with, for with the time that those were released in the the first X Men film is why you have all of this shit that we talk yeah. about. Yeah. Well, I would say X Men and uh Spider Man. Those are the two I, that I would the, well, well I would say X Men more so than Spider Man because of the ensemble in this of the, yeah. of the, the group, yeah. you know, the mega production value of it. So um uh, I was a teenager too when this when this uh when this show came out. Granted I was an adult. I was a grown ass man. I wasn't even a teenager. Like, I was uh I was uh, in what was I in? Like nineteen ninety two. I was uh I was ten years old. And I remember yeah, I, was, I, was, I was I was like five, I was like five years old at the time. I was eighteen. Yeah, so, you know. yeah he was eighteen. <laughs> eighteen with a decade of collecting the real shit, the real but stuff. I, I, and like I said, you know, like like this one, like the new series so far. It's only been two episodes, but so far I would say it, it does the comics justice, and uh, they they did things that the other cartoon wouldn't have done. Uh, so it was pretty cool. All right, Jeffrey. I didn't. I saw as you said you worked on it. Now, I guess. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Go, go back to that. Go back to that. Yeah. Um, it's day two to what the X Men are really about. I guess this is where I have a, and this is I respect your opinion. The first time in the chat, I don't know what, what side you're coming from, but welcome. This is where I where where the philosophical split is for me on all of this stuff. To me, when you say what the X Men are about, I go to a different place than this cartoon ever did. So when you say what the X-Men are really about, I'm thinking Chris Claremont. I'm thinking Jim Lee. I'm thinking Willis Potatio. I'm thinking John Byrne. I'm thinking the stuff that was literally in my hands as this stuff was being released. I'm thinking Fatal Attractions, which was released right after this was released. The things yeah. that happened in Fatal Attraction were not going to happen in the cartoon. So I guess that's where there's going to be a philosophical split between me and others. is because when you say that, what I guess it's who, it, who you are talking to. So if it's based on a comic book, and you fluffify that comic book, then I then what is what is it really about for me? That's that's where where teenage me was asking. It's like you know, can you sanitize something that was never meant for children without taking away what it really is? That's just by the way, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, Jeffrey, real quick, uh, uh, are you on IMDb by any chance? Because I thought I'd go ahead and look you up on there from a uh, um, you know working on the average of X-Men, see what else you've uh, done. So yeah, if you're on IMDb, let me know because I'm trying to find you there. Well, and then, you know, Axel's like, you know, he's like, I'm not a huge fan of the theme song. I love the theme song. I want to punch I, that theme song makes me want to punch holes into people and or walls. Dude, I love that song. And not only that, you know, uh, I, I, I saw Axel saying how he thought the theme song to the live action X-Men, X-Men Part 1 was better, but the live action X-Men theme for the first movie, especially it was, it was based on the animated series theme. It, it's very similar. Um, and so it's like, not, and, not nearly as annoying though, that, that, no, I, that I, I love that one. Dude. When I, I saw that song. of madness, when they, when they played that, when he, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? But I'm like, okay, fine. Um, well, they, and they played it uh, during Miss Marvel at the very end when they said she's a mutant. It was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I just want to see X Men. Come on, you know, and what? fuck. Please, Kevin Feige, if you're watching this, I know you came up with these X Men movies. I know, but I know you've always done a good job of recognizing what the past is and what the future is. You're the best at it. it. 
Please, Please don't let me have Christmas madness. But also, Feige, you know, just, just madness. bear in mind that William did approve all these scary movie streams. So it's like, just, I mean, yeah, well, that was charity. Exactly. that's a charity. That's your cause. <laughs> you, you pro- hey, you got deep pockets. Help us help us avoid all this misery. But please, please, I am imploring you. I am begging you. Do not use anything from this cartoon, either version, if it, if it's, it's not consistent with the, the MCU that you've built since 08. And I don't see how you can do that. I think you are going to have to build an X Men that fits within this. And you know, as great as this nostalgia is, nostalgia is like a bomb. You know, if you can do it right if you pull the right wires. You everybody, everybody uh, walks out alive. If you pull the wrong one, everybody dies. I thought so, they did, and not only that, but the dialogue in uh, the episodes I thought was really good. Um, there wasn't really a lot of scenes where I was like, what the fuck? Or like, that doesn't make any sense. I thought it, it all flowed really well. Like I saw a TikTok video where this guy was making fun of like uh, one of the episodes and saying how it was hella woke and all this stuff. I didn't oh, get that. That, that, feel- that part I will defend. Yeah. I will defend the cartoon on that one. Because like I said, X-Men has been woke since September of 1963. If you don't realize that you are literally every villain that the X-Men was designed to fight. Well, you are literally but, that but guy. You're the way guy. the guy was slandering it, I was just like, this is so stupid. But no, I thought it was really cool. And, and then, you know, the character morph they brought back. And uh, I know that was a big deal for some about how he was kind of like a non-binary form, but it was fine because he's a shapeshifter. So like he yeah. really so it was like Mystique. Mystique was banging people as guys, impregnating yeah. people as a man. So uh, you know, so it, it, you know it's and it's funny too because like you know Zack Snyder had said this a while back, and and, and it was true because I remember thinking about this back in the day. But it was like you know, um, <clears throat> it's like Marvel. I always felt like Marvel was always like it was always darker than DC, uh, you know, especially with the X Men. They always had a much darker tone. They were dealing with with more controversial topics, topics that you know that were influenced from you know racism and all that uh, inequality. Well, they were created to do so. They were created. They, to do but so. that's what I'm saying. Like, the fact yeah. that that they uh, that they they tackled those those um, those topics was it was, was always so fascinating to me. And uh, and as it turns out, you know, the MCU was always like, you know, brighter, more hopeful, you know, nicer. And then the DC ended up becoming or DCEU ended up becoming super dark, you know, which, you know, I thought was really well, cool, too. But still, here's here's the thing, though. Had had Marvel not been in bankruptcy, you would have started out dark. You would yeah. have started out dark because they would have had those characters at their disposal. But um, so uh, and I'll see a drug of super chat there that you know, didn't come from our side. But hey, that's fine. By the way, uh, I, just, uh, yeah, I, I just yeah, I just found you on. Uh, yeah, here, I just found a uh, Jeff's uh, IMDb. So yeah, let me scroll down to his. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, uh, the, yeah, right, there he is right there. Yeah. Animation lip sync on a uh, SB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we, we were. I'm, I'm oh, by the way, we, um, we, 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 Jeff, we, we, not we, knocking we, your work, not knocking you personally in your work. It's just I have a philosophical problem with these animated shows in the 90s and their influences uh fun fun i hope this is not true i hope you're just fucking with me uh the success this series is going to have will influence uh what they do in the next decade. they shouldn't it should not a it's in an era that is not going to be as far as i know and two th- no 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 all right that is my problem fun fun i love you but you just illustrated why in the same thing with batman all right listen no the 90s was a, a special animal where you could get, do this stuff, but you cannot show grown people. You cannot homogenize these things, you know, uh, and, and, the, and the MCU, especially I'll be after with Scarlet Witch did and look like the last time you saw her. You ain't giving me no cartoon X-Men after that. You are not giving me cartoon X-Men after Multiverse of Madness when you had people's heads exploding and people getting ripped apart and shards of glass, you know, and her, you know. Uh, doing what she did, you're gonna you're gonna go give me you're gonna go give me the the Huggies version of that. After all that, no, <laughs> you get, you're gonna have to do something that is consistent with the universe that you build. I can't see them. I think this is a cool thing that they're doing, separate from everything else. You get your nostalgia out of the way; it's done and over with. But I I can't see this influencing um, because there's no. You would have to literally put something in your universe that's not consistent, and he's been really good at that. Um, Jorga, what is you know whatever seven ninety nine is in Australia? Is <laughs> oh yeah, that on, theme, on I age. love that. I love that theme song, Spider Man, because because I was pretty you know li- I followed that very religiously as a as a kid. And that's well, uh, it, it, I, did, I you didn't that, you blinked you missed it. If you blinked, that, it was gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, they added Spider Man to that Saturday morning Fox Kids uh, lineup, 
like uh after you know i forgot how much longer after but like it was after the x-men had already been out and i remember thinking like if you miss an episode you know let me tell everybody right now back in the day if you missed an episode you were fucked that there was, was it. that was no it DVR, that was baby. your one shot there was no, no DVR. DVR. There was no, no streaming. streaming. There was no, I'll, I'll go online and watch the episode. No, that shit didn't exist. And you didn't so, know when it was repeats were coming. So your ass better have a TV guide, you know? Yeah, because like, so Damn if kids. you all of a sudden tuned in on Saturday and it was a rerun, you were like, oh shit. <laughs> You're like, I've already seen this. that's the one you missed. But uh, yeah. mid-2000s Marvel comics were pretty dark. Listen, you know what else is dark? All of X-Men. That's all of X Men is dark. They were actually, they were actually, dark. They were actually Marvel's actually comics wise is actually darker than the DC was. Yeah, actually, no. I thought it was. Here's a, it is a that is a wide perception. The most popular and most selling comics of Marvel were all the X titles were and whatever Frank Miller was on was. Yeah, and that's that true. Was Daredevil. Everything else they they were always terrified. Fantastic Four for the most part. You know, it had issues, but, you know, Iron Man would have a drinking issue, anything like that. But for, for as far as that level, they didn't give anybody else license to be that way but Chris Claremont uh, until, like, the mid to late 90s when they let everybody do it because they were getting desperate and they needed better selling books. But, like I said, it, with DC, it was part of what they did. With Marvel, it was what it was allowed to by a handful of writers, which is weird because when you think of that, you, you think that oh you know Marvel's much darker? No, nah, it was it was if you, it, it was the, the the top selling comics were, but the rest of it was you know, you know, and and Spider Man had some issues it, you know you know when the Hobgoblin came around it was different type of I mean, for the most part it was basic storytelling which was fine it didn't all have to be dark but Chris Claremont Neil Gaiman Frank Miller people like that showed you showed you it could you could take your audience to that mm -hmm. spot and not lose them. You know, so um, so yeah, all, all of Mar Marvel uh, uh, X Men, it, at least X Men, X Men was dark from pretty much the beginning because if you interpreted it for for what um, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby meant it to be, it was a civil rights struggle from the get go. Mm -hmm. And if you were Absolutely. watching, if yeah, if you were reading the comics and you were watching your TV, especially post 1964, 1965, you were seeing what Stan Lee couldn't display in the comics was being played out in the TV, and most people w were able to make the parallel, make the connection. All right. Um, so yeah, that car. I, I will eventually watch the cartoon. From what from what I hear, there's been an adjustment made that won't won't make me as nauseous as the original concept of the cartoon. Like I said, the concept of these cartoons in the '90s was just like as a as a young man, as a as a just starting comic who held these properties near and dear to them. It just was sacrilege. I mean, seeing Apocalypse softened up like that was like. I mean, I can I can I can taste the vomit in my mouth now when I first saw him on that on that show. Well, but, but that's the difference that was that that was made for kids. It was on Fox exactly. Kids. I mean, they, they had to cater to that. But I think now on depending on how long this show goes, uh, you're going to see a much more uh, serious, much more mature version of uh, of these characters. And that's I mean, already uh, you, Magneto's character has been extremely badass. And just it, well, he's I, consistent with that era in the comics. They even gave you that costume like I was explaining the other night with There's the a M. Reason that he's not wearing when he goes through that era in the eighties where he becomes a headmaster, he's not wearing the bolted, the, the, the helmet with the mm -hmm. horns on it because they wanted you to perceive things from his point of view. And he actually has a point of view that is legitimate um, that you really need to, when, when he lays it out there and, and, and actually when, uh, when he forms the acolytes and everything else, when people start leaving professor X for him because they don't see professor X's ways working, uh, that was something that you know was always embedded. Is always, that was always a conflict. Uh, so I'm glad to see that they're visiting that. But like I said, they're they're about 27 years too late, and it's not 1997. Well, but at the same time, like uh, he addresses that in the show too about why he's not wearing the helmet and why he's changed his look. So and it, it, you know, and he he talks about that, and it, I thought it was really good. Um, I just think when you get a chance to check it out, I thought episode two was better than episode one. Episode one is a lot of fun. Episode one is more like let's team up and kick some ass. And then episode two was much more story driven uh, with a huge uh, plot twist at the end, which I thought was amazing. But um, but overall, though, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it did the show justice. I thought it did the characters justice and it made the characters better as well. I thought Cyclops was absolutely better 
way better in this version of the X-Men, even though it's the same character, but like his fighting style, the things that he would do, uh, it was just really cool to see. It made you, it made you wonder like, man, if we got in live action, fuck, it's going to be badass. Anyway, um, Jeffrey Peterson, <laughs> it was groundbreaking at the time, and it did not seem like it was for kids. It was punk rock. The average cartoon fan didn't know who the X-Men were. Okay, I got a slight problem with that, respectfully. Um, I don't know if ground... I, I, it all depends on where, where, you're, where you're coming from. Yeah, I it, think... It instantly... It instantly, I knew as an eighteen-year-old, I knew this was for kids. I had grown up watching. Kids oh, cartoons. absolutely, absolutely. So that um, the average cartoon fan didn't know who the X Men were. That's fine. But here's the thing, and I always say this: not everything needs to be made for kids. Make stuff for kids. Create stuff for kids. But if you have to change, and I that was I to me that X Men was not recognizable to the X Men I was literally collecting at the time and been collecting for ten years. Uh, at that time, this this thing was released. I mean, X Men fans, eighty two, all the episodes. Give me this stuff in nineteen ninety two. It to me, as somebody who could have recited uh, X Men to you, I'm like, what what is this? So it's like I say, would you you know you want to make a G rated Friday the Thirteenth? No, because Jason hacking people's heads off isn't for kids. All right, yeah. you know I have as much use for these type of cartoons as I have for G rated porn. It shouldn't exist. You know you can create stuff for kids. X Men was not for kids. All right, the stuff that the X Men did leading up to that point, and in some cases beyond that, was not for kids. And if you're going to adapt something, and you know, if you have to change so much to adapt it, and you had to, immediately they had to, then just make something else, make something new that has always been for kids. You know, that's just my opinion, but I can respect everyone else's. I think for its time and for it being a kid show. I thought it was more serious than most of the kids shows were at that time. So I get what he's talking about because I remember as a kid, I mean, like I said, I was like 10, 11 years old. I remember thinking that the show felt uh, much more serious and darker than other shows. It, granted, it's coming from me as a 10 or 11 year old um, compared to the other kids shows that were out there at the time. You know, this was much more serious. I mean, you're talking about, you know, people, you know, more action, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, obviously mutants and, and non-mutants and, and that whole struggle. And so it was definitely different than anything that the kids had seen. But at the same time, you know, as a kid, you know, we were collecting X-Men comics. We were reading X-Men comics. So seeing it on on TV was, you know, was was, was really, really cool because, I mean, okay. we're like, yeah, this is amazing. I have but, a different word for it, and it's not cool. But that's fine, like I said. But um, they, that's what I'm saying. Perception-wise, as a kid, yeah. I thought it was really, really good. Now, if I was 18 years old, I don't know if I would feel the same way because I'm, I'm expecting something different, something, you know, a, a whole different feel to it. But I think they got they went as, as dark as they possibly could being on Fox Kids on Saturday morning. If this was a show that was on MTV or on Liquid Television, then you're talking about something different. You know what I mean? Yeah. It depends on, on 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 what channel that this show was being presented on. Um, and so, to me, that's a that's a, that's where you where you have the meeting of should we do this or not? And if we're putting it on a channel uh, for, for kids, and then just don't, just don't do it. Uh, because were you ever going to get the mutant massacre on on that cartoon in nineteen ninety two? No. no. no, no, no. So you are telling me you can't do things that are consistent with X Men, that are recognizable as X Men, that make the X Men what they are. Because you have to, you know, put it in front of an audience that really, like I said, there's so there's millions of other ways you could reach that audience, you know. And like I said, if it were just a cartoon itself existing, it's easy enough for me just not to watch it. Yeah. But it's it's what I what I always say about Batman. It's not it's not the fact that it's out that it was made. It's the fact that we can't separate our kids' self from our grown up self. I don't. You know, the cartoons that I watched when I was a kid, I don't wear diapers as a grown ass man anymore because I grew up and I'm not going to have I'm not going to need that influencing my right. grown ass. It's the Christopher Reeve that that was OK for me as six year old William is not suitable for a grown ass man, William, anymore. I need something different because guess what? I grew up. So, right. But but I mean, this show, 97, just like how you're saying, you know you've you've matured past that chris reeves superman this one made changes to appeal to that same audience but now at an older age 
but it still stems from an audience that they softened it for. So you're never going to really retro right. take away that. It's but I mean, like, great, but, but like I know. said, if let's say this show never came out on Fox Kids, and let's say it came out on like MTV on or you know Liquid Television, you know during that show, you would have a much darker state. I mean, I mean, look, look at you would uh, have the X Men. You would have the X Men. Yeah, it would have been recognized. Look at X-Men. animated movies like a Heavy Metal. You know what I mean? Like that. Like you weren't going to get that on Fox Kids, obviously. Okay. Um, but but okay, and if you're doing Heavy Metal anywhere, if you're doing Heavy Metal anywhere, and you have to neuter it in any way, guess what? Don't sucks. do it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna suck. That's your answer. That's the yeah. Answer to the uh, well, and, and then of course you got you got Rebel Moon, who you know is heavily influenced from uh, heavy metal. And then you talk about if you if you were to neuter it, it wouldn't be the same. So now I'm you know, obviously that begs the question: How different is Zach's rated R version? That's an hour longer compared to what we saw in PG thirteen. I I I think it's gonna be an entirely different movie. He says like a different the thing world. about that is though is that I know that coming in and that this movie is not going to have an undue influence yeah. on an entire genre. Um, I would like say I said, this, William. I would say watch the first two episodes and just see what you think. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and uh, I thought they did a really good job with it. And then what's what's crazy though is that you know I'm I'm sitting here talking about how much I like the show, but the the guy who created the show got fired. <laughs> So I'm like, great. <laughs> One of the shows I I love that they did in Marvel, they fired the direct, uh, the creator. I was like, oh shit, it's crazy. All right. Okay, not this. And we'll move on after this. A tech, yeah. uh, But but if uh, but it got kids probably never picked up a comic book or watched any of these characters. If Batman, X Men, Spider Man, regardless, these guys. No, it did. Um, and here's why: because it gave you expectations of something going forward that you either shed as you grew up or you try to carry into adulthood. And then what, what ends up happening is now when we, 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 when we finally get uh, uh, these movies to come home to their core things, now we start getting the people, well, it doesn't kill. He's too dark. He's too brooded. Oh, what's going on? That's not because you associate that kid stuff with what, you know, with what your perception of the character is, even though, by admission, they altered those characters to make them suitable for you. So the 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 one the influence should be what they are. Batman is what he is. Batman does what he does. Wolverine is what he is. He disembowels people on a page by page basis. He kills every time he puts those those claws out. Uh, Storm guts people with her knife that she carries after her power. The mutant mass, scout hunter shoots mutants at point blank and their heads are disintegrating on the page. That is what the X Men are. Not by me. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do it. Chris Claremont said it. John Byrne mm-hmm. said it. Jim Lee said it. So I'm going by, if you're going to call it X-Men, then it's the X-Men. Otherwise, if you have to carve away at that, even if that's the first thing, listen, I can't, I couldn't be there for you to hand you a comic. Sorry. But um, when it, when it, when it, when it comes to that, it's not the fact that, that, that was there. It's the influence that it has. It's like I said, I don't hate crisis, the story. I hate the influence and the habits that it built into the, to the industry. So if you pick this up for the very first time and as you grew up and you shed the diapers and you put on the big boy pants and you got the job and you, you know, got the hair on your chest and everything else and you, you, you left the kid shit behind and that influence behind, all oh, more power to you. But if you brought that anvil into modern filmmaking and when these characters become their core characters, when Batman beats the shit out of people, which Batman has done for decades, when mm-hmm. Wolverine... Wolverine rips out your intestines with one hand and causes you to be bionically repaired. Uh, when, when, when Storm is street fighting in, in the gutter with Callisto, it, you know, it, it, when, when you get to that and you're not trying to influence and lighten that, then I'm okay. But when you come into the game, well, this is the preeminent so-and-so and I, I, I wish they would adapt that. No, no. All right. I don't need to see Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck adapted to my, my, my slasher movies and my violent movies. Cause why? Because I grew up. Yeah, but that's like me saying, you know, oh, uh, you know, I've seen Spidey and Friends, you know, the kids show that's out right now. That's not yeah. my Spider Man. I mean, that's a new exactly. version of Spider Man. You but, can make that. I mean, the, 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 that's the thing. If you can do that, I'm on board with you. But it's too many people can't. They want these things that they grew up to to influence the, the grown up world. And I'm like, why? Why? It, it literally says for kids. It says but, for kids. But, Why but, do you want to but have even, something that says for kids influencing my adult life? Come on. Even when you get X Men in live action, I don't know. 
how close it, you're going to get to the first what you got in the comics. The Holocaust. The first scene of X Men was a prison camp. They went right. They, they no, went no, home. no, no. But what I'm saying like is. That. When it, when the MCU does X Men, I don't know how much they're going to hone in on that. I loved on the first X Men movie that it was you know it it, it was a concentration camp and, and 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 he's you know the the raw emotion of him being separated from his family you know caused his his mutant ability you know to be expressed. I thought that was great. You, you guys are t- no Dork Knight. You should not hate the Super Friends. But Dork Knight, if if you come in and we're we're doing a, a session of, of a creative session and you try to say, hey, I think we should make modern day Justice League like like Marvin and 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 you know Super Jan and Gleek the fucking monkey and all that, now we have a problem. I love the Superman, uh, super super fans as a kid. I got a kick out of that that fool with the the tablecloth for a cape and the bell bottoms. And the Indian but, that was but that shit's around. really corny. I, I mean, that's not really indicative of how you know Superman and Batman comics were. I mean, they were much more violent than that, much more it's, serious. Exactly. But see, I watched that as a kid, and that might have been some of my first thing. But what happened? I when I when I come with my expectation, for but comics, you still like the show. Exist. You still yes, like it though. It did not influence. It did not influence the now. It did not. Yeah, but when I grew well, up, okay, grew okay. Up, yeah, that's my thing, the influence, not necessarily the actual quality of the product, because to be honest with you, I have no problem with the quality of these, these, these the influence. The influence is a key thing for me. The expectations going forward, that kind of taints the audience because this is what their expectation. This thing for kids is their expectation for adults. And I'm like, no, that's my philosophical spit. Brad, what do you think? And I, I pray that this is not true. Because it, it, you, it, even now, when you, you know, Baggy, if you're watching, come on, man, come on, let's let's all be grown men and women now. We're we're grown. Well, men I mean, with this. come on. To be honest, uh, if if ninety seven is supposed to be what Feige wants, I mean, I'd be cool with that. I thought it was great, so I was like all for it. But I mean, like I said, you, I would watch it first before okay. you start ripping into it. I, I I listen. I will watch it, but I don't. I, I'm not going to be any less. Uh, happier about like i said i still have this thing for kids influencing the adults world like i said i don't wear diapers anymore i don't eat baby food anymore why because i don't need to i grew up i have things for adults now and i don't take the little kid stuff that influenced me when i was a kid and try to shoehorn it into to the adult world and so i have as a grown-ass man i still am dealing with sanitized versions of these characters that are brutally violent and that come from a brutally violent atmosphere, every single one of them. So, yeah. You guys. I thought Brad was going to say something. All you guys. <laughs> uh, no. Are you guys? But no, but, but here's the thing, though, is, is like, look, not only that, but I mean, look, you're a huge fan of, of wrestling. I mean, you, you have the belts behind you. And that is in itself. You know, I I used to watch yeah you know, uh, WWE. I, I was I was an avid fan for a long time, and even now it's like I can't even watch it now because it's it's. I mean, for one, again with with wrestling, once you fall off the train and you fall behind, it's hard to, for me. It was hard to get back on and catch up to where you know, what was happening. Um, but I mean, the storylines that are put out there by wrestling, I mean, they're they're fairly corny, fairly one dimensional. But we love that because because it's so easy to follow and so one dimensional and so you know just just pure testosterone. See, I, don't, I don't take I don't take Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling and with eighty what the eighties wrestling gave me. And I don't when I go to these shows and I watch these shows, I have no expectations of that stuff that was okay in the 1980s and the 1990s is going to is going to fit in this modern world we've changed as a society so it's just no but like i said now if i came in and and and, and told uh uh tony khan and you know triple h hey i i don't i can't deal i can't deal with this modern day you know wrestling that you're doing you know i why don't you make things more like things were back in me in 1988 and if i'm tony khan and triple h i'm like because you grew up we grew up why don't you go back to uh, wearing a snuggie or what are they what are they, you know uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, sleeping in a crib. Why? Because we, we, we're beyond that now. We're in a different place now, influenced by big boy, big girl things. You know? I mean, look, like I haven't watched it in quite a while. Mainly my wife got me out of it because she couldn't stand it. So I had to like, you know, watch it, you know, behind the scenes because she was like, I can't watch this shit. 
Um, divorce. No, I'm just kidding. I know. And, uh, but no, I, I mean, like, uh, even Night of Life said, I, I grew out of wrestling in the late 90s. Uh, you know, but when I was watching it, you know, Triple H was probably one of the best performers that were out there. The Rock was really good. Kurt Angle was amazing. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, obviously. I and mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of wrestlers that I'm a huge fan of. And, uh, you know, but still, it's like, you know, as corny as, as that is or or how stupid they can be, I still love it. You know what I mean? I, I, I was I, I was totally entrenched in it. Um, and look, I'm not saying that. So, okay, okay. Here's my thing is that you said, no, don't hate super friends. Just don't let it influence how you perceive the characters, right? Oh, no, how the characters are the, the creative the, uh, direction of the characters, because that's what's happened. A lot of this, a lot of these perceptions lead to influencing on some of these later things and their perceptions of that the characters don't do this they don't do that i'm like no these characters have always done that your perception comes from a place that wasn't consistent with the source material you know but it seems so, like like when you go back to uh justice league of 2017 it feels like they were trying to bring that feel back to it that that super friends kind of feel that that kind of you know, corny kind of. I'm talking about the the, the oh, theatrical, the thing, and that's why it failed. And that's why it, it failed. Yeah. And so that is a clear indication of what uh, of what William is talking about. That you shouldn't take, you know, the version of the characters that you grew up with and say, you know, it has to be this way and only this way. You know, it shouldn't. You know, it, it shouldn't predict how the characters need to and should only act. You know, you know what I'm saying? So here's so, what happens. Here's what happens because now when these characters have behaved a certain way, uh, you know, and then when it comes time to make the characters closer to what those characters are consistently about, we have a split audience now that says this character doesn't do this, this character doesn't do that. Uh, I wish they would do it my, my, more like the cartoons. I've heard that so many times. And like I said, I want to jam Q-tips in both of my eardrums when I hear that because now you're having these things that are not just out there. They're out there and they're carrying weight. They're carrying weight. And that's why you have a lot of these comic book audiences, especially with DC. That's why you have a lot of this stuff split because you have a, a generation that came up with something that wasn't what it was. And then a gener another generation that has, has no, like I said, you, the Joker in that cartoon is never going to do uh, anything uh, like what the Joker was was. A Joker's a mass murderer. He's a killer. You think you're going to see uh, in that in that era in that era were you ever going to see something like the Killing Joke in any any cartoon? Were you ever going to see a death in a family in any of those cartoons? No. But no. that was Batman. That was Batman. So you're basically telling me you're not going to see what Batman is in something that's called Batman. You weren't going to see. You, you, were you going to see uh, uh, Wolverine rip Donald Pierce to shreds? You know, uh, and have him bleeding and holding himself together with, with his hands as he escapes. Were you going to have that? No, that's no. what they were. Were you going to have? But that's. Much, a, but, but even with the not, MCU, not, when they do it, you're never going to get that. I don't think you're ever going to get that violent. Uh you when you you you, you wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't expect it to, to see uh, Scarlet Witch walking around with blood all over her face, uh, making people explode either. We saw that, so I think you are you got a better chance of that kind of consistency because it's what the MCU is. All I'm saying is build something within the MCU that you've created. You don't need no more kid stuff. We're, but that we're, was we're, we're, we're good. But that was Sam Raimi. I mean, he gave Sam Raimi way more freedom to do what he wanted to do in his film. And it showed. I remember watching that movie, uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness, and thinking, yeah, this feels more yeah. like a Sam Raimi movie. And I like that. If, if there's uh, X-Men, there's going to be violence. There has and to be violence. Be graphic violence. It, well, and, and, and that's the thing. We're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. But, because but, we got the cartoon generation. It's like, oh, my God, they're going to go into shock. Especially the ones that I, have never I, 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 See, I don't think so. Because, look, when the first X-Men came out, I felt that that film was was playing it safe. They had they all had the same costume, just like a black leather suit. Wolverine never really uses claws on anybody, except for just like a, like a jump at you know uh, saber tooth and all that. But when you got to X two and Wolverine is running around killing all those soldiers that are attacking the mansion, that was badass. That was more of what I wanted to see. Because once X Men, the original X Men, was successful, they could start doing stuff. Now that you've gotten, you've bridged the gap between what the general public knows and what us, us geeks know, now we've bridged that gap a lot to where you can have Wolverine in his original costume. 
Uh, whereas before the average, two, this is 20 some about 22 years ago. Yeah. Where the average fan just wasn't, wasn't on that recognition. Basically. They weren't now ready that for are, that. If you would have yeah. put him in that yellow suit or even the brown suit, everyone would have been like, what the fuck? Like it, it just wouldn't have looked right. Now they expect it. But I mean, when you look at movies like, um, what was it? Uh, Logan. I mean, after he, he takes all the medicine and he goes into that berserker rage, that was a badass yeah. scene. I loved it. Yeah, you, you're not going back from that. You're not going to give me. I mean, I, I, I mean, he's slashing that. dude. He's slashing through guys' faces and heads and body. I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah. That, you know what I mean? That, and the kid me. That's the that's the kid me kid. That's a Wolverine I grew up with as a kid. When I was, I wanted, I wanted more guys, of it. I was like, yeah. dude, this is this is badass. I mean, even in the Wolverine, you know, uh, he had to fight all those ninjas and all that. And, and and that whole scene, too, was really, really, I thought that was well done. I thought that was really cool. I actually liked that movie, uh, the Wolverine, except for towards the end when they drain his adamantium, which was like, oh, yeah, that was, yeah. it was unnecessary because then in the next film, he had it back again, which I guess you can only assume that Magneto did that, but they never really showed it. So it was kind of like, why did, wh what? What? Yeah, they tried to captive the essence of one of the one of the more more famous the Fatal Attraction storyline. But even then, he's he's only without his uh, animantium for it's temporary. He ends yeah. up getting it back. He uh, gets it back. I mean, even in the comics when that happened, I remember like uh, me and my friends were we'd always talk about like it's only a matter of time before he gets it back. There's yeah. no way because that started the whole Logan series where he was by himself and he had his wood cl his wood claws and and yeah, they would break bone, every so bone. often. Yeah, oh bone. I don't know why I said wood bone claws and then like he get into fights and then like one would break off. You know, you're just like, oh my god. But we all knew like it's only a matter of time. Like there's no way you you can bury a character <clears throat> like Wolverine. I get them now. I get them now, and this is this is where you know. I make my case to them. I don't try to deter. If, if, if you want the X-Men, it's right there. But here's the thing, though. It's sitting right next to that legit X-Men. You know, it's sitting next to the the actual stuff. Here's a trade paperback. If, you know, all I ask is that, okay, if you if you love that stuff, great. But when you come in, you know, we put the weight of, 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 of that, that perception to change what the characters are going forward. That's where I got an issue with it. You know, so... Um, yeah, I, I, we, the excellent stuff. When it comes to people coming in buying comics, we do have a lot of people, more people because of that. But we, the core audience of X Men goes is, is you know, it's going to always go back to the core stuff. It's just that the the comic book collectors not necessarily, you know, you know not what they're looking for. But once again, here's the thing though: uh, you don't necessarily need to look to us, but look look to grown ups. You know, look, look yeah. to you know, look to. But, but I think what it, what it did establish X Men ninety seven was that. You had a wide audience that that you know was very that liked it. It had a positive reception, and on top of that, you had a lot of people that didn't need to have an origin story for all these characters. They just they just already knew who the characters were, and so to me, that's a test to see but like, did hey, you, did you did you what, know who you, Wolverine was? Did you from watching the cartoon? Did you really know who Wolverine was? But that's not. I mean, watching the cartoon that, is not my only resource of Wolverine. You know what I mean? Like that, that, you're 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 not you're you're not the uh, the era of my rat though. I mean, the because did you really did you, these people who watched this and most likely never picked up a comic? Did they really know what apocalypse was? The the genocidal mass murderer. Well, of course. Apocalypse? I mean, that, that, I mean you know? if you're basing it off of that, then no. But what I'm saying is that like there wasn't a huge need to be like okay. When we start the show, we have to reintroduce all the characters and kind of give all of them some origin story. No, they didn't do that, and it was fine. I, I appreciate the fact that they didn't try to go back and try to reestablish every single character because, I mean, that's going to take too long. And half the time when you get, you know, an ensemble movie, they spend a lot of time trying to, like, you know, um, you know, tell everyone's a little bit of everyone's origin. And, and I, I like that this one just jumped right into it. And I was like, good. Oh, you're talking about just... the movie. Okay, yeah. The movie. I, I think the X Men movie, the original X Men movie, but was groundbreaking. Like I said, yeah, it doesn't no, definitely. get a, as much credit as it deserves for being why we are in this comic book atmosphere because it proved to every studio that you could do something on this scale. And here's where we can improve on it. Here's what we can do. Is it the greatest comic book movie of all time? No, but I think it's up there in the top two or three uh, with as far as importance because if that movie doesn't come out. Uh, studios are still handling things the way they were handling them in the nineties. Yeah. And that was not good. All right. So, uh, okay. So, uh, we've established that Brad, you still there? Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just letting you, I'm just kind of letting you guys just have the floor there. Yeah. Sorry about that. Brad. Right. What's the, what what else did you want to talk about? Nicotina? 
I don't know. I mean, uh, Ghostbusters came out. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I want to see it. I'm not. I'm not over the moon. Like I have to go see this now. I like after watching the trailer, I kind of felt like okay, so this one might be a little more silly, a little more like you know. I you know it's funny because when you look around and you see all these projects that are being greenlit and and the projects that we're getting, it feels like I mean not only is the MCU in in like this multiverse saga, but it feels like all of Hollywood is in like this nostalgia uh, saga yeah. where like <clears throat> everyone's going for nostalgia now. Like, you know, you, you got another Ghostbusters movie. They just announced that they're making a part two to, uh, what was it Happy Gilmore? And I was like, yeah, what the without, fuck? Without Carl Weathers and Bob Barker. I mean, I know Bob Barker couldn't live forever, but I, I thought Carl Weathers, and I actually saw ha- Happy, Happy Gilmore with my dad. Uh, I mean, that's a great movie. I love that movie, but like, it's just getting to the point now where it's like, like Hollywood is just rehashing all these old movies. I mean, even Mean Girls got redone. And granted, Tina Fey was involved, which is great, but still, that got rehashed. And again, I I I, I, I mentioned this ideas, before. I yeah, I want new ideas. And so, so here's the thing: when you go back to like let's say the early '90s or just the '90s in general, right? You had projects that that came out that were so <laughs> unique for their time. Like I'm sorry, but like The Fifth Element. That was such a unique story that you hadn't seen anything like that. And and I don't know about you guys, but I I like that movie. I think it's really cool. But at the time, you you didn't see anything like that at all. And I think those are the, the kind of original stories that, that we want to see more of. And I think that's something that Zack Snyder was trying to accomplish when it came to Rebel Moon. He was trying to give us, even Plan- or uh, Army of the Dead, he was trying to give us something unique, something different, something fresh. And, and, and that's what I really liked. And even Dune. I thought was such a, like a breath of fresh air in terms of having this serious tone, uh, sci-fi, you know, uh, grand kind of movie. It, it, it was great. And and those are the movies that we need to see more of. I mean, even like the movies that kind of, you know, fall between the cracks are still good. Like Event Horizon, I think is a cool movie that you don't see those kind of films anymore. You just don't. It's either a big tentpole or, you know, or it's nothing. And, 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 and I want to see those original kind of groundbreaking stories that you just don't see very often to me that I, is is cinema i agree with you the, there's a huge problem that's a huge problem that unfortunately is is you know what they figured out they don't make money that's it's all about money it's yeah, all they, about they, money so it's like how do you market that and, yeah. and it's like you pointed out before william they didn't greenlit dune 2 because they probably figured or they were wondering is this going to make a lot of money yeah and as, as of right now dune 2 is the biggest movie of the year <laughs> dune 2 is badass i yeah. thought that was a great movie i was like oh my god yeah they were afraid and like i said if it wasn't for hbo max and them being able to get not just the box office uh, data the hbo max data i don't think you get a dune uh too and that's why when people say well they, they cost they should have released it in theaters. And I'm like, they did release it in theaters. And everybody they who did. wanted to see Dune saw it in theaters. I saw but, it. Theater. But you were, you're were you talking about the theaters that had just reopened out of COVID. And at that point, you know, nobody was really going to theater. But I think that, you know, if that came out in an era where COVID didn't exist, it would have um, bombed. bombed. I, yes. I don't think so. It would have it would have bombed. And here's a reason why it would. And I love the movie and I love the director. Mm-hmm. But it would have bombed because, A, it's a complex IP. It's well known, but not in a broad sense that makes money. And it's not a type of movie that if you're not already into it or into that director that you're going to take a risk on. Mm-hmm. Now, does that mean you're adverse to it? No, not at all. But you're not gonna you're not gonna take the wife and the kids or the date and spend that fifty to one hundred and twenty five uh, on on a, on going to the movie with with tickets, gas, and, and snacks, and everything else on a movie of that obs- that obscure and everything else. Now, the diehards like us, we're, you were never going to see me watch this on a screen smaller than the biggest one I could see it on. But we, you know, you need everyone else on board to watch it. And would, it, would, would HBO Max, having on HBO Max, had it, it was low risk. All they had to do is is aim their remote at it, and if they didn't like it, it the, the risk was over. All you, you just paid for HBO Max, you just flip onto something else on HBO Max when you want to. So well, had it been released under 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 normal circumstances, Dune's Dune's four hundred some odd million dollars uh, with its budget is not a success story on its own. Dune's watchability on HBO Max is what got Dune too. 
I mean, so that budget it's, budget is massive for that first one. Yeah, but still, I think that I don't think it'd be a failure in the box office. You know, if it wasn't during COVID, I think that uh, I think it, w- it would have done really well. I mean, I mean, look at the well. I can't I can't compare it to the Batman because um, Batman the, Batman capital, prints money. Bat, Pat, Batman is four hundred million right out of the gate. And then right out of the gate. Store and anything. Dune is not. Dune is not. Dune and I I say this because I love that director and his movies prior to now don't make money. Blade they Runner, don't. don't make money. Arrival didn't. They made some money, but not like blockbuster money. And all those, I mean, some of those were super obscure uh, things. And and Dune was no less obscure. It would have. It it would have. It would have. It would have bombed. It well, that's the thing bombed. too. Like, and, and, and like that's Arrival, sad. I hate that, you know. Arrival, if our, Arrival is a really good movie. I I really really enjoyed that movie, but We're even the storytelling, even the storytelling in that, I I remember watching it. I remember thinking I was like, I could see how a lot of fans, moviegoers, w- would get to the end of this and be like, what the fuck? Like I don't get it, you know? Like or like I sat through this whole movie for this, you know? It was kind of like, dude, you, it, bombed with a capital B, with a capital O, with a capital M, with a capital B, and another capital E. And a I G. don't think it would have bombed, dude. I don't. Okay, I don't. Are you guys? Are, listen, there's, 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 there's math, and then there's wishful thinking. I'm just saying, like, you know. plus you would have had the huge marketing campaign. Uh, we, I was part of the marketing campaign. I know, but but like, there's no way they would have went bigger than that if, if it was. Uh, only in theaters. I mean, it would have been. They were. They, they were. If they would not. They were not. The the the, the marketing campaign that we went over. It, that was the marketing campaign that had been developed and and signed off on nine months earlier. They were not going any bigger uh, prior to that. But, but at the same time, you're talking about in, in an era in which we're coming out of COVID. So, you know, yes, it it put yeah, the movie in front COVID. of more people on a, on HBO Max. But COVID, COVID, people want to use COVID. COVID is a reason for a lot of movies. Dune's not one of them, and I love Dune. You guys are, don't come at me like I don't like Dune. No, but no, no, no one's real. saying that. Yeah. But but what about the Suicide Squad? Do you think that is that bombed, or do you think that's because of COVID? No, I think that bombed because here's the thing about Suicide Squad was released after in August of 2021. We're vaccinated, in. we're coming back to the theaters, even though you had Omicron, wasn't that big. Now it bombed because of name value. Same reason why Dune would have bombed uh, with the general public. It bombed on name value. Because when you took God, God, Godzilla vs. Kong, which was released before any of those movies, we were still heavily into COVID, and we didn't have a vaccine. We didn't have any. We didn't even have a vaccine on the horizon at that time. In March of 2021, that movie made made the uh, the kind of money that they were looking for it because it had name brand value. Now, out of all those Kong. movies, yeah, yeah, exactly. All all these movies, Dune on the way Part I... One was fucking excellent. One and the one. The so just, just because you like a movie. Just because you like a movie, you just can't be cartoonishly unreal about its prospects for making money. I wish all well, of Denny Villeneuve's movies made money, but they don't. And that, that, that's you know the, the reason I'm uh, you know the, the joke I always tell when you you make the uh, comparison. That all right, guys. Godzilla yeah. versus right, Kong let's, let's... like their success uh, uh, is the you know because you know, that was the first like big box office success of the uh, the pandemic era. And I always say it's like yeah, after that year, like what could be more cathartic than watching the lizard and the chip beat the shit out of each other? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like give me Godzilla versus Kong because I just want to see some fucking action. I just want to go and turn my brain off, and that's what and that's what that was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're about to get that in a week. Again. There was, a, oh, you know what? Yeah, I, I think I said it before. Like they're they're slowly turning Godzilla and Kong into fucking Transformers. You know what I mean? Where it's just going to be like a bunch of fart jokes and then action sequences. But it's like, come on, man! Like, like, see, and this is what I hate because, like, I like Skull, uh, uh, um, uh, Kong Skull Island. I liked uh, Godzilla by uh, Gareth Edwards. Oh no, was it Gareth Edwards or was it Matt Reeves? Uh, no, Gareth, 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 Gareth Edwards. I like that movie. And, uh, you know, but when we start getting, when we start getting stupid and we're giving a Kong, like a, a fucking robotic the, the arm author. sleeve, it was like, what, what are we doing here? Come on. And, and yeah. I know people were like, well, if you watch the Japanese versions, that was totally crazy. I, I don't care. Well, not, we're in America. Um, yeah, right, exactly. Dude, I don't give a shit. On a $165 million budget, which even by 2021 is a lot, and that's not including the one one fifty six that they spent on advertising because I still have a lot of the stuff at the store. It made $434 uh, million. Now, it was projected prior to that to make much less. Now, a lot of those, uh, uh, lot of those people who got to see it 
you you had return viewers. Remember, you had return viewers who once they saw it on HBO Max did. You have 20, 25 or so percent that went to the theaters to see it after they saw it on HBO Max. So if you put this movie out there without HBO Max, it, it, it's, it's it, it, you know, I guess it considers what you guys consider a bomb. A, that's not a, that for the for what they spent on. It's not a lot of money. They actually spent a, a 190 on this one, but it's at 500 million. They said this one needed 500 million to break even. It's not going to matter because this one's going to get re-released in Oscar time. So you're fine there. So it's going to wrap up its box office. It'll be fine. But you had you, if they were they were even worried. Warner Brothers was worried about it might be bombing because of the. That's why you didn't get Dune one part one and two filmed at the same time. Yeah, they were shaking about this movie. So for you guys to come in and retrospect and be like, "Oh, it was a, it wasn't a bomb." You got to understand the dynamic of what Dune was at in twenty twenty one, and where Denny Villeneuve's movies were as far as being able to generate that type of money. Now he made other movies, and he in and, and you know he made profit margin, but you're talking about. Not on a budget like that, and, and and most heartbreakingly, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Nothing, you, you know. So we're, we're, it's it's it was a concept. I love Dune. I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but at the same time, you have to be realistic about without COVID, without HBO Max, were people what would have would have done what it was, and would we have had number two without it? I think it would have off. I hate saying that, by the way. It's my favorite. He's becoming my favorite director, but you got to be real and look at the math there. I mean, look, I, I see what you're saying, but I, I just don't think that Dune would have bombed that hard. Well, how much I, 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 I'm not saying. How much uh, you think? Uh, take COVID away. Take, take COVID I, away. And take I, at, the, at the very minimum, I think this movie could have made anywhere from 400 to $500 million. I mean, at the very minimum. I mean, I wish I, I mean, we don't, we don't ever have to find out because of the circumstances. Right. I am thinking that it, it, I'm thinking 330. 330 330 max and 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 that, and that could have been the case that's but a bomb it's a bomb but i mean look i at, at least he got to make part two and, and yeah and I, I, i'm so happy he did like i said i don't twist this up in the chat i know well and, and, so and remember too like remember how everyone was waiting for the announcement of uh, for yeah, them the green light during we dune two we were like uh they're gonna announce this or what when we were talking to our intermediates about it they hadn't considered it they hadn't um Consider on a box office level, they weren't on board with a Dune Two. So when you're the people who are making your movies, legend are making your movies, and they aren't on board with a Dune Two based on its box office that it got then, um, you're you're that's that should tell you something right there. And then you're talking about having to wait for the analytics to come from HBO Max, which is what pushed it over the edge, you know. Which was which is I've got it happened, but let's be real about what Dune was. It, it was. A, like I said, it was a complex IP. It was a risky IP to take on. It was a very expensive IP to take on. The marketing campaign, it was bonkers. Uh, and it was bonkers expensive because it, the, that marketing campaign was before it had been decided, you know, a lot. We weren't, we weren't thinking about COVID when we were making these movies. So, but even without COVID, like I said, you know, if, if I, you're, you're saying for, for something. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how much do you think? How much do you think without COVID and without HBO Max? How much do you think, Brad? Uh, doing uh, doing part one mix. The first one, I, I think. I yeah. think that's probably that's about how under normal circumstances that's about what it would have done. Yeah, four, like the, four to five hundred. Yeah, I, I wish. I wish it would have you know done five hundred. I wish it had the potential to be well, with the, the, sec- two, the second two, one. Just did five hundred. Yeah, because of because of the groundbreaking. The second one doesn't even get made without yeah, but, under the but look, at, so. look at like uh Black Adam that did what three hundred and twenty million dollars, something like that. Uh, and then, and then you got the Flash. How, how much did that do? Two hundred and something million dollars. Yeah, we're talking. Just, like you said, now we're talking later on. But I'm talking out in 2021 when it was released. And we, there's a lot more attached to that other bullshit. Oh my god. But yeah, we're talking right. 2021 when Dune is released without Dune two without you know. You know it's just, it's just, it's just, for it's, me too i think that dune one i already knew what was going to happen because i know the story so i was kind of like i love seeing all these new characters but like i know it's all going to go to shit <laughs> in, in about an hour and a half you know so uh i was more excited for dune two because i wanted to see how they were going to handle you know um what do you call it? Uh, the the native people who who lived on that planet. The Fremen. The Fremen. How the Fremen were were going to uh, be attacking? Uh, what do they call it? the Harkonnens? 
Yeah, those are yeah. guns. And, and, and so uh, that whole aspect was really cool. Although uh they were trying to attack that one uh th that spice mining machine and they had that one ship that was like hovering above like shooting at them and i was like yeah. you know in my, in my head i was like you know if they would have had two of those they would have won that little skirmish <laughs> they only had the one and once they shot it down it was like well we won you know like fuck, no one's coming but anyway, yeah, no, I, I thought it was good though. I, Dune two was was a lot of. Fun. I thought two Dune one of the best movies in a, in a long time. It's far surpassed Man of Steel, Profit Man of Steel. I mean, that's not that doesn't matter to the guys like Zaslav's in there. I don't I don't give two shits about your profit margin. You know what I care about? Because profit margin is not shit without what volume. If you're not making the money in the volume, great. It's like me selling this this uh, Dune profit uh, this thing I made um, I made twenty dollars profit, but I need a thousand of these well, to plus, to I'm to. You know, to make it plus, to where, you know, man of steel. I mean, there, you know, there was of course there were the reporting with all the uh, the an the ancillary like tie-ins. Yeah, they, they had, had built they in. Made, uh, they made, they made their budget back before the movie came out. Let's see, uh, but yeah, I listen, guys. I I in a, in a hypothetical past, I I I love Denny Villeneuve. I think his movies. I need more people need to see his movies. I'm not saying I would be rooting for Dune to to bomb. I just think realistically, based on his previous box office. Based on the the abstractness of the uh, of the IP, not everybody's like us reading and following this stuff, and the genre itself. I think it would have been it would have struggled to to, to break three hundred thirty three. I think it would have struggled, and, and based on what it was 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 spent on it, that wouldn't have been you know that wouldn't have been good. Now, would Warner Brothers still you know you know with Blade Runner? Blade Runner lost them a shit ton of money. But it won them two Oscars, so you know, kind of made up for it. And so there was kind of like a, a, yeah, there was like we didn't make yeah. a lot of money, but we won this. So that 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 always that always yeah. sits well with the studios. Yeah. Also, without we didn't have streaming. You know, twenty twenty one, we were we had streaming, but HBO Max wasn't what it was, and they, you know, they, they you didn't recognize that back end money that you make. You don't stop counting the money till the money stops coming. Uh, so we were in a different. I I think that um, like I said, the fact that they didn't justify a Dune two just based on solely on the box office alone tells you what they thought of the box office and what yeah. their prospects of the box office. And I'm not, like I said, I just because watch the whole show guys, watch the whole show. <laughs> that's a movie that should have been filmed back to back. I back mean, to you, back. You, you would have imagined exactly. like that's, you know, like you what? how much money you would have saved if you'd have done that, especially where the, the second one takes place mm -hmm. almost entirely. I mean, yeah, you would, you would have saved a crap ton of money. And the, the amount of sets and, and costumes and all that exactly. shit. Some of that shit, like the, the it wasn't like they used the same shit from the first film. So a lot of that shit had to get remade. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, you know it just sits around, or it got damaged, or you know it falls apart. Um, so yeah, no, I mean back to back would have made more sense. But I mean, obviously, I think WB was just trying to make sure that they didn't lose too much money. But <laughs> whatever. Uh, but no, doing two years back then. Also, let's be fair. What's that? They didn't have the best decision makers at the time. Also, no, I think no they didn't. They, they, they didn't have the backbone. They didn't have the backbone. To me, no matter what Dune, okay, once you once you've committed to making Dune, commit to making Dune. You can't scared money doesn't make any money. So 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 commit to doing it because A, it's cheaper, and B, you do like because Godzilla versus Kong, if if they would have gone on the box office of Godzilla King of the Monsters, Godzilla doesn't if, if they yeah, had yeah. already been making GVK before that. If GVK wasn't already in production, it doesn't get made because the oh, box yeah. office for uh, yeah. uh, King which, of the Monsters which, wasn't good. Yeah. Which I'm sucks because I do because I did like uh, King of the Monsters quite a lot. I, I enjoyed it. I uh, Godzilla vs Kong. I super enjoyed. You know, so, it, you know. it sucked. It, it sucked that that you know underperformed, but also it was very fortunate they had Godzilla vs Kong already in the can. Or yeah, like, on the basis of uh, how that one performed, yeah, then we would have gotten Godzilla vs Kong. I yeah. thought Godzilla King of the Monsters was badass. I really liked that movie. Um, they did a lot of things that I thought were just really cool, like. When uh, when that one monster comes out, he's like he's the flying one, and it flies over the city, and it just like it as he man. flies over the city, it, it just fucking rips everything apart. Like, yeah, I was like, dude, yeah. that's badass. Okay, so Godzilla King of the Monsters had a massive budget, uh, but it made three hundred eighty-seven million. So in that ballpark is what Warner Brothers would have considered a bomb. Uh, right in that, right in that ballpark, uh, right, probably about give it 20, 25 million, give or take, is what they considered a bomb. Had Godzilla versus Kong not already been in production, the, we don't get that movie. So, a, and that's with two marketable uh, with an marketable IP and other another two Whoa. worldwide, 
you know, so I got to, I got to just look at that. And I'm like, I'm, I, and I'm saying, I wish this was true. I just, I see how these guys make their decisions. The very fact that you didn't film these back to back tells me that you had a certain amount of money. And if those circumstances with COVID and HBO max weren't there, we don't get a dude too. Well, at the same time, like Godzilla versus Kong, like that's an easier IP to, to advertise and to promote. It's Godzilla versus Kong, exactly. kind of like it's Batman versus Superman. Even then, even then, it was yeah. like oh, okay. But Godzilla versus Kong, I mean, you want to see that? Like, oh, cool! I want to see them fight. That sounds cool. Um, and and then that one, I mean, there was a clear winner in their fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. God, yeah Godzilla yeah. won that fight, and then well, yeah, uh, should have never had a up. chance. I mean, I mean, Godzilla, Godzilla is a Godzilla should have always it should always beat Kong because of it's like me fighting Brad with a flamethrower and a gun. And a tail. I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna even get with I mean, kung fu skills. This is like. But know, I mean, he won that my, fight, and then and then Mecha Godzilla showed up, and then they had Mecha to Godzilla to wiped the fucking. He didn't even get a good punch in on Mecha Godzilla. That was hilarious. He <laughs> yeah, got wiped was, out. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that, that was cool. uh, he got his ass kicked, but. He, he he was already kind of fucked up from the the Kong fight, so he was like, "Oh shit!" You know what I mean? He was like, "Motherfucker." Well, Kong was <laughs> He's like, well, Kong was too because he he because he lost that fight. Yeah. Well, Carl, he he had no chance. So he he didn't lose. He did the best he could. I mean, literally, he was up against a dragon. Oh, uh, with with I mean, come on, man. It, that, that, that's a, that's not a fair fight. All right, they wanted to film it back to back, but Legendary uh, said they wanted to see if Dune did well and seemed like it uh, would make money. No, that is that is not the case. It was it was Warner Brothers execs too, because Warner Brothers execs were going to be on the hook for that first dollar expense for another movie. So it was it was both of them that that, that were like you know and like because of the Snyder cut. <laughs> well, no, and even and even oh, yeah. even that. It, okay, <laughs> remember it was a while after the box office had been tallied for Dune Part One before they made that decision. They didn't make the decision for Dune Part Two based on the box office. They made the decision on uh, uh, Dune Part Two as far as the watchability goes on HBO Max because they figured there was watchability from, like I said, that 25% who saw it on HBO Max first and then came to the movies. And beyond that, they're like, okay, if we do this next one and we only release it in the theaters, we can capture this watchability on our data. And, our, and they do, they were sort of right. They were. They, they, it turns out they're right. But but if you can consider the, even the money that it made. I don't consider 450 whatever, whatever million that it made a bomb. But in the eyes of the studio who makes the decisions and the financiers who make the decisions, that alone, Dune's box office alone wasn't going to be it. And I and like I said, everybody for the most part, 75% of the people who were going to see Dune and only see Dune on the big screen first, they all saw it. I, I saw it. You saw everybody who wanted to see that on the biggest screen just, you know, uh, just like Kong versus Godzilla, we all saw it in the movie theaters. The people who weren't going to see it, that weren't going to give it a chance in the theater, for the most part, weren't going to. Everybody who, who saw that movie, less that twenty five percent, saw the movie on the format that they were always going to see it in. So that means without HBO Max, not only do you only make that money, you lose the watchability and you lose the chance to make the case for Dune Two because that would have been considered a failure without those circumstances. That's why I say streaming is 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 it's part of your math when you're determining whether you're going to make these movies or not. But I mean, like I liked initially uh, the whole day and date idea where it would come out in theaters and it would come out on HBO Max. I was like, hey, I kind of like that because I don't really want I don't want to go to the theater right now, and I rather just watch at home on, on my big screen with surround sound. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> it it does take away from the the feel. I, I mean, I remember as a kid. You know, there were countless weekends where, like, you know, we would go, we would go to the movies, and that was like, that was a huge deal. It was like, wow, you know, like, like going to the theater was was a huge experience. Same here, man. Yeah, Same and here. and so, and, and I think a lot of movie or a lot of movie fans these days, you know, they don't have that built in feel for for the movie theater. You know, my kids, when I take them to go see a movie, they're a fucking blown away. They're like, oh my god. This is incredible, you know, and, and that's the feeling that I remember having as a kid. I remember I remember the first time I, I saw Batman 89 in the theater. I was completely blown away. And granted, I was younger then. I was like eight years old. And I was like, oh. I was like, this Forth. is amazing. Fourth, you're using dinosaur logic that doesn't apply when you're counting money. It just is not. This does not. This, you know, the people. Who saw Dune? Dune was a quality movie, so you're not making sense right now. 
Dune was a favorably quality, highly reviewed movie. And still 75 to 80% of the people who, who, you know, who saw it on streaming did not go to the theaters to see it. You know, I, I think you know, that's to switch gears a little bit, but there's certain movies that sort of transcend, you know, you know, like when you saw them in the theater, it like gave you chills. You know what I mean? Um, and, and there's a lot of them and there's some that really didn't. And there's some that did, you know, and I, I remember as a kid, like I was saying, Batman 89 was a big fucking deal for me. Well, that was uh, big. 13 year old me yeah. was like, dude, every Batman was everywhere. Uh, we had we had yeah. shed Batman sixty six from our from our from our psyches and, and embraced a dark Batman because because the Dark Knight Returns allowed for that to happen. Thank you, Frank Miller, uh, for Batman <laughs> yeah, and, to come and, home and, and beat the and, shit out of people. You know, and for me, it's like I mean, there's one in particular. I'm still waiting on the opportunity to see theatrically. And then you know, you know, but uh, uh, but you know that some people on here have that I have that uh, I have not. What's that? Well, take a guess. <laughs> What? With the raid too? What do you? What do you? With the raid too? <laughs> Meet the Spartans. Well, I, I, I just, the you lost me, huh? Oh, the Snyder cut. Yeah. Oh, on a big screen. On a big screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I got I'm to see it on the just... biggest screen possible. It was yeah. fucking amazing. I, there yeah, was, there, you go. there was shit underwater, yeah. in, in the, when they show the the stronghold of the outside of it, it like yeah. you could see uh atlantis in the background with like flying vehicles and there were details i didn't even know existed i was like holy shit and, and you could tell that he was setting it up for james wan to do his yeah, you know yeah, atlantis he, like he, he gave him the yeah. breathing room there for yeah it but, but but you can see james wan's atlantis you can see some of those details in the background and you're just like wow look at that shit uh, I've stage. never seen a movie so clear on such a big screen in my entire life. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And I had to fly down there and then fly back the next day. It was nuts. And as, as, yeah. as I should see, also you should throw out the raid too, because because uh, that that was another oh, one. Here we I go. Would, I, well, I would I would I would kind of classify that or <laughs> other ones that I have seen theatrically. Uh, yeah, you know what's a good movie uh, is uh, Children of Men. Have you guys seen that movie? I think that's that's, that's a fantastic movie. I know that's of it, but I don't think I've seen it. Yeah, that that movie. I need. I, I felt dirty after that movie. For some oh reason. yeah, that that's what I love I felt, about it, though. I felt stepped on after that movie. Or like, uh, what's another one that's just like, you, you know, uh, you know, love them or hate them, but like, I I love, you know, Neil Blomkamp movies. Like, like obviously, District Nine, badass. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like I like Elysium. There were some aspects of it that I was kind of like, okay, I get it. But that was a risky movie. That was a risky. It was a risk with that movie. So I, I was, you know, I was. Uh, it didn't yeah, do you know, well, but I, I did. It. I, I liked the movie. It was, I liked know, it. Movies, man. And by the way, William, uh, th this is interesting. Uh, we were talking about that because it actually does kind of factor into the, the Roadhouse discussion, which you, know, you guys talked a bit about that on the Vodka stream. Um, of course, we're doing the watch party for that tomorrow. Uh, I got everybody watch wants to hop in. Uh, and um, it, there was, of course, the whole pre-release controversy of Doug Lehman and. Amazon being a dispute of a, he wanted it to go to theaters and they wanted it to be primarily Amazon Prime. I will say now, having seen you know, having seen it, um, and this, this is like it's kind of a thing where it's like you you, you do need to actually see it to kind of you know, better grasp like a you know kind of a where he's coming from. I think, but the, like the way like a lot of the fight scenes are filmed, he, I got the sense like okay, yeah, I, I get where he's coming from here. Where it's like yeah, he definitely did. It, 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 there there are aspects of the camera work and a lot of the uh, kind of the ways they kind of juice up a lot of the uh a lot of the action in it where it's like yeah i i, I understand now kind of uh, it, it, again it's like i i get amazon's perspective too about like this this serving their broader business model but from his perspective as a filmmaker it's like yeah i understand you know his perspective on that where it's like he clearly intended a lot of this to be seen with a crowd so it's like it, it, after seeing it i kind of you know have a better grasp i think on where both sides are coming from and I yes, I was like Alfonso Curon directed that uh, Children of Men. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, Danny Villeneuve did that. I'm saying I was saying in general. I I, I like. No, he's talking about the type of film. I got it. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the director, I, if you're robbed to have you have a right, and every every most most directors will want their stuff on the, on on a big screen. How he handled it was outright fucking ignorant and stupid. Um, he made himself look like a jackass. Um and well he, well, well, he ended up having to walk it back anyway because he did the you know the, yeah he, he made himself there. look a lot and like I said a lot of people I, I think he may hopefully it doesn't but I think you you hurt your career when you when you handle things right not not your opinion 
your opinion is your opinion. What you think is right or wrong. These things that that's your opinion. You're allowed to have that. But you got to realize you're you're a, you work for hire. You're, you're you're every studio is looking at how you handle things, whether it be an actor, actresses, director, how you handle things. It's like, do I want to deal with that guy again? You know, if we have to make a decision, we, we make a movie, we have to make a decision financially. If somebody else buys it and wants it for their purposes, do I got to deal with this headache now? You know, and he's a good director. He should have, he should he should have, you talking know, about Doug Lehman. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, I mean, Doug Lehman is, is the kind of director where it's like, you know, his previous films speak so highly of him. Like, you know, he did Swingers, uh, he did all the Bourne movies. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which I thought was just all right, but it was fun. But a fucking Edge of Tomorrow? Are you <laughs> yeah, fucking I mean, kidding me? That movie is amazing. Yeah, Do you that, need that to come out and that, say that didn't you know, well? The, the no, it like, didn't. That but, but that it, movie. But, did not, like a but it's performed well. It's it's made it's made its money. It's made its money well, now. But done, after I, theaters, it took yeah. off. When everyone started seeing it on on the, on the movie channels and all that, dude, yeah. that's that is one of the movies. It's so well done, and the uh, the chemistry between Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt was so good, and uh, that to me, I mean, look, I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan, but to me, that was one of his best films was Edge of Tomorrow because he was able to be a douchebag who had to figure out how to be a hero, and it <laughs> it, it, it was good. Don't, don't spoil it for people because there's a lot of people still waiting to see that movie. That's a good uh, it's, movie. It's, you get you can watch it on PBOD. But yeah, when it when it, if he'd have came out and said, you know what, I think this should have been on cinemas or in a cinema, that would have been okay. But when he came out and said some of the other stuff he said, like he was lied to and this and that, I'm like, and then you had to have Jake Gyllenhaal come out and actually say, no, this was always what we were going to be doing. It's just kind of, it was a bad look. And like I said, I understand 100%. If you are a streaming service or you are, are you, you the, the, the box office isn't your primary breadwinner, then if you don't want to put your movie in a theater, then that's on you. Uh, I mean, Netflix, at, I think, I, I think exactly. Netflix is pe- people exactly. saying, well, Netflix should, should have put this on. No, they shouldn't have. Unless it's going to be Oscar worthy and they have to meet that qualification, they are selling a streaming service. They are not selling you the box office experience. Yeah, they're, that's not they're what they're going after. Services. So it doesn't make no uh, sense. I, I wanted Rebel Moon. Remember, Brad, we were talking about this for, for a while. Hey, you know what? Everybody's like, wait, wait, we should hashtag get at least Rebel Moon in the theaters. I'm like, Hashtag all you want to. I, I, as much as I want to go see this on a big screen, no matter what version it is, I doubt, I highly doubt it's going to be uh, released in any relevancy on a big screen because that's not what, what Netflix is selling you. Yeah. And yeah, that makes no sense for Netflix to put Rebel Moon in the theaters. It doesn't make but, there's no sense for them to put Rebel Moon Part Two in the theaters. Rebel Moon well, 3, 4, but, 5, 10. But, but they no did sense. put it in theaters, but it was only in select theaters. Yeah. Ones that they actually had the profit margin control over. Right. Where they and, didn't have but, to pay for the, uh, you know. But I what did they do, though? They made that more of like a fan event as opposed yeah, to yeah, saying, yeah. let's just put it on theaters for a couple of weeks. Yeah, no, let's they made drop it like this unique. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, this unique fan event. Because that's what they did with Army of the Dead, and it's like that's how I initially saw Army of the Dead was during you know the theater run. I had a week before it dropped on Netflix. Yeah, but it was a yeah. really really small one though. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, that was, was only was for. I, think, I thought weeks. it was for thirty days, but it might, might only been for a couple of weeks. No, I saw true. Army of the Dead in the theater, and I really enjoyed it in the theater uh, much better than I did on watching it at home on Netflix. Uh, it, it was yeah. better in the theater. Yeah, and even then, that made no sense for them to do that then. I mean, and that was and again that was still you know like at the ass end of covid and uh you know like we went and saw it i i went and saw it with uh with ryan and 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 acs <clears throat> and the theater wasn't even packed uh but it was cool to see it though we really enjoyed it and but here's the thing and i remember they did an ad campaign for that so netflix had to pay because i still got the patches and i still got the posters at the store the las vegas patches they did a, yeah. a quite for what it was a quite expensive ad campaign for that i think they learned their lesson for that because once again you're paying for the ad because the theaters are no you're not going to take it for a medium release if you don't commit to promoting the fact that it's in the theater and that money comes from the studio not only that the dollar that comes back is 35 percent less so you're it's way not only diminishing returns you're kind of losing money uh when you when you when that's not what you're selling not only are you losing money or marginally breaking even which that kind of sucks too but that's not even what you sell. I don't want you going anywhere else to see my shit when I have the streaming service for the shit. That's that's that's, that's, that's literally that. That's what they sell. Well, and, and what kind, they of go, sell. kind of going back to what I was, uh, you know, making the comparison to uh, or the raid two. Uh, and actually, had some flashbacks to this uh, when everything ever all at once uh, was initially 
being released because they this had actually kind of a similar rollout because uh, for anybody who hasn't seen didn't see because I can recount this because I was you know, very psyched for them. Uh, who hasn't seen the raid movies theatrically? Uh, what they did, they started kind of regionally with it. So they, it, it was it was done over both of them. They were done over like a three week period where like first they put them out in like New York, LA. Then they put them out uh, the second weekend. It would be like other cities like Chicago and uh, DC, Miami, kind of that. And then it was the th- uh, the third week. That's when it finally went wide. You know, for both the raid movies, and so that kind of made uh, both those experiences you know that much more you know sort of, ones that uh i kind of cherish that much more because because it was and it was a very, you know it was still fairly limited in terms of just like how long it was out theatrically but you know but i those are uh that kind of adds to my uh my right. my fandom and my constantly bringing them up on as far better watch parties than meet the spartans will ever be despite how much you guys want to torture me real quick austin it did it, looking at the numbers it made no sense and that's why they didn't do it again um you made a million dollars in the box office I think, and it, you you took so a million dollars at the box office minus the stu- the the the, um, the the cinema is thirty five percent, and then minus what you spent on all those posters and stuff that we got and patches and stuff that we got. It didn't it didn't make it, and, that, and that's probably why they didn't do it again. You, you, you gotta have to well, learn. You're, you know, but not only market. that, though, I mean, you're you're coming out of COVID, and you have a movie that's by you know a acclaimed director who makes movies for theaters and Zack Snyder. So I think it was also a move to kind of put Netflix back on the map in terms of like, Hey, look, you know, we're going to have a limited release for this movie because we want to make sure that, you know, we, we give it as much as possible, the, as much bump as possible because we, we want to stay in the Zack Snyder business and we want to make sure that, you know, cause I'm sure he wanted this film, to be in the theaters as well i'm sure after that then when it came to rebel moon he was like yeah look this is a streaming movie i get it let's just keep doing that yeah i i, um, I, I, it, I, I think he's kind of adapted to the uh the streaming exactly the exactly and, and, well. and also and I, I know everyone's talking about the dream lens the dream lens worked way better in theaters than it did like on any tv it it, it, it was not <laughs> as like you know like when you watch on tv the dream lens sometimes is, is kind of like whoa it's kind of it kind of fucks your vision, but in, in the theater, it didn't have that effect. It was it was really cool. It was so big, you know. Yeah, I just think it comes down to you are what you are. So whatever it is that you're selling, uh, I, I'm I not need, sending I you. I'm not. I'm not sending you anywhere to go see uh, that. I, I'm, I'm, I need to highlight this comment though because there's no possible way you can not be trolling here, Bradley. When you tell me that Madam Web is better than Rebel Moon. <laughs> No, fuck no. <laughs> I yeah, think Madam cool, Web man. had some I, cool I, aspects, and it could have been really the, cool. I utterly, I, one of these days, utterly I'll see the movie re- that they actually meant to release. I want to see I the movie utterly, that was actually written. And done. Utterly, utterly refuse to take that statement seriously, Bradley. I'm yeah, sorry. no way, no way, no way. I mean, Madam Web was supposed to be, you know, Terminator meets Spider Man, which I think would have been really cool, but instead, it was a shitty movie. With shitty dialogue and shitty acting, and that made I'm, a profit. That made a profit. And it made a profit. But if I didn't number take much, VOD, yeah. Cause it, cause but it, so. but I mean, like the the the, just, the, just, the jungle Spider Man was like, what? Yeah, was what is crazy. happening? Why is this even in the final cut? I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ! And you have Peter yeah, Parker it, it, in the movie, but anyway. And, and listen, oh. we, 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 William and I, we were like trying to be voices of moderation leading up to where it's like, let, listen, everybody, chance. You know, it's like just let just yeah. let's see what's on the store, and then we see it's like no, this thing really is shit. Yeah, because they changed <laughs> their shit. minds on the movie that they were making. If they would have made the movie that they meant to make, and actually that you kind of see that they ADR'd over all the whole movie, you'd have had a better chance. But hey, Brad, it it's looked better. ADR. Theater. Yeah, it looked better in theaters and not shitty on Netflix. But hey, it it, it when it, your Netflix, do you care about how shitty it looks? <laughs> uh, on on exactly. uh, you, you're 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 selling. You're making movies for Netflix. You're making movies to bring people to your streaming service. They don't care about the comparison to the theater any more than Amazon does or should. I understand where you guys are coming from because you're cinephiles. You want to see it on theater. But as a business model, there's no way. If, I, if I'm doing the money counting for, for Netflix and you tell me we got this cool thing we got everybody talking about where you're, you're going to take it somewhere else. You're going you're gonna to take it somewhere else and you're going to give away some of our money to do it. And on but, top of that, you're going to give away some more money to promote it. How about you have a seat in here? Have some wine, you know. Um, well, and, and that's my point with when it came to uh, Army of the Dead. It was like, hey, 
let's give it a limited theatrical run because we we need to show a select all you know whoever goes to see it in theaters that like you know this is some of the shit we have to offer but it came to rebel moon they didn't have to do that anymore because they were like yeah we've already established this yeah. this audience Just the fan base knows kind of yeah. yeah exactly so i i think that again that's why they did it they knew it was coming out of covid it was kind of like hey let's make sure that you know this is i mean at the time i think that was uh, I, I don't know this to be true. I shouldn't say this, but I think that was like one of the bigger, biggest directors they had at that time. Now, you know, they, they've done other stuff with other directors. Like even Spielberg did a freaking UFO uh, series for Netflix and, yeah. and, and all that. So, and, they, and they're doing it right because where everybody's like, we can't invest all this money into this and that. And Netflix say, fuck it. We're going to, we're going to spend some money. They need to spend By money way, on uh, Mindhunter. Bring Mindhunter back, if, damn it. Bring it. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, this I've seen it floating around a bit on Twitter and also on YouTube that somebody finally did uh -oh, the... Uh, Brad getting yeah. in trouble on Twitter. No, I'm not going to pull it up. I'm not going to pull it up. Must but, be a day, must be a day uh, that ended why. No, 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 no. I didn't run to that one dickhead. So <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys know who I'm talking about if you've you know, seen some of that. But um, uh, so I, it, but it's floating around a bit on Twitter and on YouTube. Somebody finally did the, uh, you know, if Mad Web came out in 2007 kind of fan edits. Oh, uh, I didn't even watch. Be honest with you, I I didn't I didn't like the edit that the studio did to their own movie. Yeah. So and that's the thing; it's like it's so bad. It's as if it came out in two thousand seven. You don't even need to edit it. it, it it's program. crazy what they ended up doing with that movie. Um, knowing what but, was supposed to be in that movie, knowing what that movie was supposed to be, and that hurt. Like, like, why did you do this? Yeah, I I mean, like the like the whole diner scene. Like I could see what they were going for. I was like, okay. I was like, now I see it. Now I see what you guys are trying to do. And it, this whole movie got screwed up. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, such I'm a mess. I'm really, I'm really. It is. I I do not think it's an exaggeration to say that Matt Webb is Catwoman level bad. No, um, Catwoman was fucking horrific and a waste of a Sharon Stone uh, uh, appearance. I, there was nobody. Listen, the actors and actresses in this movie were were borderline. Okay, I, I don't think much of Dakota Johnson as an actress. <laughs> to be honest with you, so, like, okay, really. I, I had a I had an Academy Award winner and a multiple Academy Award nomin nominated actress, uh, and and Catwoman, and that movie failed on levels that just was painful. And I saw I that movie that. on deployment, so it's like, oh, oh well, yeah, yeah, that's I'm sure that made the experience that we just yeah, so Bradley, even, even even your namesake, yeah, Catwoman's person. <laughs> No, uh, Madam 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 Ma 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 Webb is, is, is Madam Webb is absolutely her is absolutely there is it's it's every bit as bad as you've heard, and and, and even like that's the thing is that like, even a lot of the cast of like uh, like Dakota Johnson and See, now uh, we're, uh, we're just being trolled Sydney's we're movie. just being trolled now okay guys all right yeah there is you, know, there right, is you got anything else you got anything there's else now. There, no no I'm pulling this really back I'm pulling this back up fourth there is absolutely positively no way on God's green earth you type that with a straight face. He's trolling you, Brad. We they know what we, we, we respond to now. No, even we've been by, on the air even, together. No, no, no. Even yeah. by his trolling standards, this is like I he mean, has no standards when it comes to his trolling. <laughs> that's the whole thing about him. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's that's where I'm going to end it tonight. Um, I don't have my I don't have my nine eight eight thing up here, uh, but I, I started the show off with our um, with our quest um, to uh, get to fifteen thousand. Now we've adjusted that. Uh, We've adjusted that goal. I think we can reach that goal. Um, I think we'll reach it uh, uh, by um, by twenty four. Also, we have the walk, the FSB walk out here, and we will be handing them a giant check because we will be splitting that amount between the local here for their walk and then the national. So people not only Vegas, you definitely need AFSP, this yeah. city, um, yeah. and then but it, it it works everywhere around. And um, like I said, just continue to to go to the places that make you happy. Have fun. I know we were, we were, we we're talking about this stuff. It's like, it, it's not, it's not, we're not, uh, we're not doing nuclear plants here. It's, 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 it's imaginary, uh, lizards and monkeys and, 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 and uh, aliens and stuff. So, uh, come here to, to, and leave here happy. That's my, my only goal for this show is that everybody who participates in it and everybody who uh, is in a chat, you don't have to agree, but leave happier than what you came into. That's what the, that helps your mindset. And, uh, you know, like I said, I get messages from people all the time uh, that our, our show, me, Brad, and, and the people who've been on hosts before, everybody part, that the listening to the show helps them get through some tough times. I am blown away by that because I'm like, I'm a YouTube nobody. The fact that I'm having any effect in your day is awe inspiring for me. I hope we all can continue to do that. Um, Brad, where can they find you? <coughs> Excuse me. You guys can find me on Twitter. 
<laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and Vero. You can find me uh, as someone on Facebook. You can of course check out all my writing and you know commentary and all the uh, nerd topics we discuss on here. And of course, you can find me uh, for on the Sci-Fi Center, breaking all this down, doing all our watch parties. And one last thing I will leave you all with is that this man who left this comment right here, this is the guy who made the donation that made it so that I have to do a Meet the Spartans watch party. So that should tell you everything you know should know there about how seriously you should take this statement right here. But even good could come out of fourth. He got us to ten thousand. So uh, Nicotine. Yeah, you, you, you good come out of fourth. You just have to like, you have to pry. Like you have to reach down so deep. It's like it. it I, I, yeah. <laughs> the things we do with the things we do for a charitable cause. Uh, Nicotine. Hashtag blame Brad. Yes, of course. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Um, you can follow me on YouTube uh, on <clears throat> at the Nicotina Show. Uh, I also have a sports channel called Dre Area Sports. Follow that one as well. And we're we're getting ready to relaunch uh, my third channel with my brother, and that's going to be called Beyond the Unknown. So I'll be putting out information about that as time goes on. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Nicotina underscore show and also on Instagram as well at uh, Nicotina show. I didn't say take all day. Damn, that was like. <laughs> <laughs> I just, lost. you know, it's like uh, I started to branch out to other channels uh start start up these other, these other projects because i mean it's just fun to do you know i love talking about you know pop culture it, and comic books and all that but it's fun to talk about some other shit too and so uh yeah. i just ordered a a fucking green screen so when i do those i'll have a different background because every time i do sports and i have like all this shit in the background everybody's like what is this what am i watching yeah, well, you got you got you got you got uh, mostly dc and top gun maverick <laughs> <laughs> yeah top gun maverick there he is right there I got All right, guys. Right yeah. I, I just, I'm sorry. I have to point this out. A, a sentient human being with a supposedly functioning adult brain actually typed the sentence. Wow. Let's not be mean to Forrest. Come on now. <laughs> I know. It's, he's probably, he's, he's a big contributor. Story. Big contributor. Yeah. There we go. Uh, all right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon for um, uh, the rival and then uh, later on in that evening for um, Roadhouse. And then we will do our normal because I got a brand new laptop. So we'll be doing our normal overnight stream from the sci-fi center and not my little den here. See you tomorrow. Later guys.